Hello everyone, my name is AppleGuy, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Professor Layton and the Curious Village. For those of you guys who do not know, the finale of a series on my channel does not mean that it will be the final episode. It means it is the final episode that has to deal with story progress. So there are going to be videos released after this one, which I like to call bonus videos, that detail some content that I've missed. For example, we will be doing uh, the painting puzzle, the inn puzzle, the gizmos puzzle, etc. Some things that I haven't covered in the main Let's Play because they are content outside of the main story. Uh, with that being said, let's continue forth and discover the mysteries of St. Mysteria. We are climbing up the tower, bit by bit, approaching the tippity top where the golden apple is said to lie. It seems we're faced with another puzzle lock, Luke. Oh, I meant to ask you, but our running with the explorer distracted me. How did Simon, you know... All in good time, my boy. First, we need to solve this puzzle here. It looks to be quite the challenge. No puzzles a challenge for Professor Layton and Luke, especially not puzzle number 97, Princess in a Box 1. Tired of leading a sheltered life, the princess is trying to escape her castle. Armed guards, however, are blocking her path. Slide the blocks out of the way to move the red one out of the out the exit to the right. Her freedom depends on you. Can you do it? So ladies and gentlemen, this puzzle is very reminiscent of the puzzle uh, with the balls, get the ball out. Um, and it's very similar to that because it is, in essence, a get the ball out puzzle. Let's go ahead and restart. And like with get the ball out puzzles, I'm not superb at it. But what I think we want to do is make room for this piece over here so that we can start to cycle out and uh, move some of these pieces that are, are blocking the way here. All right, so we can move this down, this up, that over, that over, up, up, over, down. This isn't doing too, too much for me, but it's making me feel like I'm doing something of importance, which I like. Okay, obviously we're going to need to make a whole ton of room so that the princess can slide her way out of the line of sight. And I've been moving a lot of pieces that don't actually do anything. That tends to be how I fare with these puzzles. So just do anything and everything I can to move something. I'm just undoing all the moves. Ah, we're probably going to hit a thousand moves on this puzzle. There's a reason this is the uh, an endgame puzzle, of course. This is no easy solution, so don't think that... Uh, well, I mean, it has a solution that is rather easy because it is a puzzle. And puzzles in this game do only have one solution, which is nice. No more is there... Uh, multiple so well, actually some puzzles have multiple solutions, but they make it ex uh, abundantly clear when we're in a multiple solution scenario. It'll always say, this puzzle can be solved several ways. How did you choose to solve it? And those are always nice to see. They are not the, not the law. There you go, 351 moves. Oh, go ahead and be free, princess. 352. There we are. Perfection. Wonderful, this is a classic example of a sliding puzzle. Very cool. There we are, the door should be open now. Amazing as always, Professor. Now about Simon, what exactly happened in the mansion? Did Don Paolo really mer- um, make off with Simon? I'd say so. This is just my theory, mind you, but I think that Don Paolo followed us into the manor. That's when he met Simon, or came across him, as the case may be. I suspect Simon had already collapsed when Don Paolo found his body sprawled on the floor. Just like with Ramon. So maybe Ram Simon has stopped functioning properly, huh? I guess all the robots break down sooner or later. When they do, Bruno comes to collect them. Then he fixes them here in the basement of the tower. Oh, do you suppose the noises from the tower are actually the sounds of Bruno's machines working? I think you're spot on, Luke. That must be why people associate the disappearances with the roaring from the tower. Don't forget that despite his peculiar appearance, Don Paolo is a scientific genius. Therefore, he probably realized why Simon had stopped moving. If it weren't for the golden apple, Don Paolo would have likely left St. Mysterio right then. I'm sure he was eager to take the robot apart and learn how it worked. And that must be when he decided to disguise himself as Inspector Chelmy, right? That rat made up the whole murder story on the spot. But that's not the whole mystery. Come on, Luke. We must keep moving. I'll explain the rest as we go. Alright. As we climb to the next floor, we will solve the mystery of the Rumbling Tower and solve the mystery of Ramon, leaving only the Golden Apple, the Noise, and Lady Dahlia to be solved. And we will climb to tower floor five. Hey, what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fancy meeting you here, dearie. How'd you like to try a little puzzle I made up? Uh, how on earth did she get up here? Hmm, she must have overtaken us at some point. 
Funny, I didn't even see the old girl pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit whispering amongst yourselves and try my puzzle out already. It's a humdinger. Sure, puzzle number 98. Card order. You played. You placed one joker and four aces with different suits face down on the table. Use the hints below to determine the position of each card. The club is to the immediate right of the heart. Neither the spade nor the joker is next to the sp neither the diamond nor the joker is next to the spade. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the club. Neither the diamond nor the spade is next to the heart. So what we do know, and thankfully as we move cards around we can organize them down here below, is that the club, uh, and that's this one right here, is immediately to the right of the heart. So we're going to go ahead and put that right there. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the spade. So let's move that out of there, which means the spade has to be either there or there. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the club. Okay, so the club can't be touching anything. And then it says neither, di uh, neither the diamond nor the spade is next to the heart. So we'll have to organize it that way, which leaves us diamond, joker, heart, club, spade. I believe that satisfies all the solutions. We will go ahead and click through and solve the puzzle. 70 Picarats. This was definitely easier than the princess puzzle. Excellent. Only a strong grasp of principles of logic can get you through a puzzle like this. Well, thank you. I believe I have a strong grasp of the principles of logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. That's the answer, all right. But then I guess I'll be off. Come visit me sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess she followed us in here. Bizarre, right? That's okay. No time to ponder these mysteries, we need to visit floor 6. We have a nice little outdoor appearance right here. Just like I thought, there's another puzzle locking this door. It looks really difficult, Professor. Luke, my boy, haven't you learned by now? No puzzles without an answer. Now we simply need to find that answer. Here, allow me. Alright, this is puzzle number 99. 3, 3, 3, 3. We're 70 Picarats. Use each of the numbers once, 1 through 9, Exactly once to fill in the blanks and complete this equation. Uh, a five-digit number minus a four-digit number equals three, 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 three. Okay, so we have a set of numbers down here, and we need to orient them in order to make uh, the number three a whole ton of times. I think the best way to start is moving from uh, right to left, and you're just going to be making threes. So what can you get for three? Um, well... Subtracting, so you need a large number minus a smaller number. An example would be 9 and 3 could give you a 3. Um, but in this case, I believe we want 8 and 5, as well as 6 and 3. That Whatever I said earlier didn't make any sense, by the way. Uh, 9 and... Uh, 9 and... What would that be? 9 and we'll put 2. Yes. Four, one. Okay, now if we do this subtraction, we will get a three from here. Six minus three is three. As you move further to the right, you'll need to use the principle of like borrowing a number. Uh, so obviously two minus nine is impossible. So if you do 12 minus nine, then you'll get your three. Four minus seven uh, will also give you that three. This is our valid solution for this puzzle to get the number 33,333 from our subtraction. That's right, there are two possible correct, there are two correct configurations. Did you manage to figure out both? Oh, very interesting. I only figured out one, but if you guys can identify a second one, leave me a comment. And now we can enter this door. Creativity and persistence, Luke. As long as you have these, no puzzles beyond your reach. Professor, I was just thinking, do you remember that picture you found in Lady Dahlia's room? The one of the Baron's late wife, Violet, holding a young child who appears to be the young Flora? Of course. That's the one. It's uncanny how much Lady Violet looked like Lady Dahlia. Do you suppose Baron Reinhold's journal entries were talking about Lady Dahlia? Shop making, my boy. I believe you want something like this. The craftsmanship of it is simply remarkable. It reminds me of my sweet Violet when she was alive. That's the one that tipped me off. Professor, do you suppose that Lady Dahlia is actually a robot built to resemble Violet? That's entirely possible. Maybe even probable, given the circumstances. But if so, what a terribly sad story those entries tell. Remember what the next entry said? Flora doesn't like the thing at all. I've seen her run away from it on multiple occasions. Recently, she spends more time playing by Dear Violet's grave than anywhere else. I'm sad to say, but I doubt Flora will ever take to it. I can't blame her, as I've changed its memory. I felt terrible forcing that change on Flora, but I just couldn't bear to see it like that anymore. Violet, there can never be another you. 
You're my first, my last, and my only. The Baron arranged for the construction of a robot for Floor that was identical to his late wife, but living with a machine that was so similar to his wife must have been too much for him. Thus, he decided to change the robot's personality, and so Lady Dahlia was created. She was originally created as a mother figure. She must have gone through a confusing transition. Um, Professor, do you suppose those robots feel sadness? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I have a feeling that each of those robots has something not unlike a human heart. What do you think? I... I hope that they do. A very profound conversation to have on the balcony here. That of course solves the Lady Dahlia mystery. To summarize, the Lady Dahlia robot was actually a Lady Violet robot, and then they realized that that's a terrible idea, and so they changed it into a new person. They look the same, but they are different people. Tower Floor 7 has another puzzle for us. Do you suppose we're near the top yet? Yes, but it seems we have another puzzle in the way before we can get there. That puzzle is puzzle number 100, called Seven Squares. Your task is to draw lines between the points on the board to form seven squares. The seven squares do not need to be uniform in size, but you can only use each pin once. Alrighty then, give it a shot. Okay, so we've done a puzzle similar to- that's not a square. We've done a puzzle uh, similar to this one, where we had to uh, draw out a very large portion. Oh, I'm using a pen twice. That's not allowed. Where we had to draw out a portion of, or we had to identify how many squares, I believe. Or we had to rotate a square. We did something with a, a, a board and squares. So this is sort of like that puzzle, just a, a step up from it. All right, so the key to this puzzle is obviously going to be in rotations. We need to make use of rotations of squares in order to assure that we are able to create uh, all the possible squares that we need. Thankfully, we are given uh, different colors as well. So if we would like to differentiate between our squares, uh, we can go ahead and do that. It's actually a very useful tool to have. Uh, so we want to make use of it if at all possible. And yes, like I said, we are, are working towards a collection of squares of uh, seven totals. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five. We need two more. We can fit one square right here. And the final square can go on the final four pegs. I have to complete that square. All the squares are completed. There's seven of them. Every peg is used once. Should be good. I don't see a world where that's not a valid solution. Perfect. We have our seven squares. That's right, tracking down all those tilted squares was pretty fun, wasn't it? It was something. Now we're free to keep climbing. You know, it's very odd how this tower is simply huge, and there's almost nothing inside of it. Yes, quite. Only in Bruno's room in the basement, this whole place is rather bare. Perhaps that is why Bruno's machines make such a racket. This tower is like a giant megaphone. Why would anyone want to construct such a big, purposeless tower, Professor? It's exhausting to climb this thing. Ha, huh. did you ever consider that this tower must have been built for the express purpose of exhausting us? It's just another one of the many trials that have been set out for seekers of the Golden Apple. Gosh, that makes perfect sense. Maybe that's also why the tower looks so scary on the outside. Potentially. Puzzle number 100 has been solved, and now we can climb to the top of the tower. This floor doesn't appear to have any puzzle set for us, so if we climb the spiral staircase, maybe... We'll reach the top floor? I think you might be right, my boy. Come, let's hurry. To the tippity top we go, and out onto the balcony. Oh my gosh. Our view has obscured from the ground, but who would have suspected a charming cottage like this up here? Look, the lights are on, Professor. It would appear that someone is living here. Chapter 9, The Tower Secrets has been solved. I will not see my progress. I'm recording! We must enter the, the cottage. We've reached the top of the tower. You can continue into the house or return to the village to explore more. This is sort of your point of no return for the game. If you have things to do, you should do it. I, for one, am ready to continue into the house because I have backup saves. What kind of person would live in a place like this? Unbelievable. Just look at all this room. The stuff in here has to be worth gazillions. This must be the top floor that Bruno spoke of. So we might be standing in the same room as the Golden Apple at this very moment? I've been waiting for you two. It, it's you! Ah! 
What's this? What's going on here? My boy, what you see here is the golden apple herself. You're the golden apple? Professor, you knew about this? I had an inkling. Don't you see how genius it is, though? The Baron didn't write the will to find a successor to his fortune. His true aim was to find a worthy guardian for his daughter, and he was willing to put his whole fortune on the line to do so. Yes. My name is Flora. I've been waiting here in the tower for so long. Were you locked up here this whole time? Oh no, but before Papa passed, he told me that I should wait here until someone from outside St. Mysterio came for me. Papa said that whoever came for me would be someone I could trust with my life. So that's why he kept watching us move about town. What was that? What's going on? Hmm? All of you must evacuate this tower immediately. What now? What are we going to do? I've got it. Just wait a moment, Flora. Latent ingenuity, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him fly. Handmade glider. Thank goodness you're all right, Professor. Aunt Palace flying contraption was something else. I really thought we were done for back there. Yes, it was quite dodgy, but he provided us with the answer to one of our ongoing mysteries. Remember that awful noise we heard the first time we visited Reinhold Manor? The one that spooked Claudia? Oh, so that must have been the noise. You put it together. The racket was like the Don Palo's contraption making a crash landing. If that's the case, then we now know the approximate time of Don Palo's entrance into Saint Mysterio. That makes up perfect sense. It figures then that Franco wouldn't have noticed Don Palo's entrance. 
So, if Flora is the golden apple that everyone's been looking for, that means the treasure that Lady Dolly and the others were chasing never existed in the first place. No, I'm fairly certain they weren't mistaken. I do believe a fortune is hidden somewhere within this town. But the Baron would need to hide it somewhere only the golden apple would know where to look. You mean that Flora knows where the treasure's hidden? I'm sorry, but I don't know about a treasure or anything like that. Let's head back to Reinhold Manor one more time. I suspect we'll clear up everything there. That'll solve the noise mystery, and there's only the golden apple itself left. Professor, do you really think the treasure could be located here? Look closely at this painting, Luke. I'm sure it holds the key to the Reinhold fortune. But I've already looked at it. If we solve this mystery, Luke, I'm certain we'll come face to face with the Reinhold treasure. That's the painting where the golden apple is hidden. Of course, we know from that close-up of Flora that she has a birthmark somewhere on her upper, uh, what is that called? Like, collarbone of an apple. I remember now, it's right here. Oak. Aha! A hidden switch! The switch seems to have activated the wall. And to think that Reinhold Manor had this secret behind the painting all along. Looks like there's a passage that leads farther in. Oh. Let's see where this passage goes. Oh my goodness, look at this place. I had no idea. Now how in the world did you know that the switch was hidden in the painting? Listen closely, Luke. Wisdom wasn't the only thing Baron Reinhold required of a potential guardian for his only daughter. You saw it too, did you not? That peculiar mark on her neck that only appeared when she laughed. In other words, Baron Reinhold set out one last requirement for the potential inheritor to his fortune. He wanted someone who could make Flora smile again after losing those dear to her. That person, and to that person only, would Baron Reinhold reveal the location of his actual fortune. That's unbelievable, Professor, but it all makes sense now. Flora, my little Flora. Where's that voice coming from? Flora, you've made it here at last. That voice? Papa, is that you? Papa? My dear Flora, has the village watched over you as I would have? I built St. Mysterio for you so that you would never have to know true loneliness. Well, to be fair, Bruno did the actual building, but that's beside the point. In any case, if you've come this far, I suppose it's safe to assume my plan was a success. My greatest regret is that I'm not only there as a, I'm not there to see you become a young woman. But please know that I want nothing more for you than to be happy. Whether the person by your side right now can give you that or not is up to you, I suppose. And to you who have found your way to my daughter's side, you have my heartiest congratulations. You can make it through the barrage of puzzles I set before you. I imagine a person with your abilities has already caught on. Allow me to reveal St. Mysterious secrets. The secret of St. Mysterious? Recently, I was told by my physician that I don't have much time left on this earth. I can come to terms with dying, but the thought of leaving my only child alone in the world torments me. This is why I've commissioned Bruno to construct St. Mysterious. At least this way, she'll be safe and protected until she's old enough to venture to the outside world. Streets and buildings are the bones of a village, but its hearts the people who live within it. This is why I asked Bruno to create all the villagers here, as well as all the puzzles hidden within them. I've asked Matthew to make news of my death public only once Flora has grown past childhood. So stranger, how does my beautiful little flower look now? I imagine she's blossoming into adulthood. Equally important to me is finding someone to whom I can entrust both my daughter and my fortune. That is why the inhabitants of St. Mysterio are constantly testing the knowledge of the visitor. If you've made it this far, it must mean that you possess both wisdom and dedication to my daughter. I'm confident that you will take good care of my fortune and Flora. This is why everything in this room, the whole, whole of my fortune, belongs to you now. When you move from here, St. Mysterio will complete the objective for which it was created. I imagine the inhabitants will fall into a deep sleep which they will never to awaken. Now wait just a minute, is he, is he saying that if we take the treasure, all of St. Mysterio will just disappear? I honestly don't know the answer to that question, Luke, but it's possible that St. Mysterio is designed to shut down the instant we lay a hand on the treasure. So if that happens, everyone will just stop? Just like puppets with their strings cut? I leave it to you, brave traveler. Draw the curtains on St. Mysterio and lay this lifeless village to rest. Above all else, take care of my precious daughter. She's in your hands now. Oh, Papa. I can't believe it. If we touch this treasure, all of St. Monsieur will just grind to a halt. Flora, I right. His inheritance belongs to you. You should be the one to decide what's done with it. I... I don't want it. But why ever not, my dear? 
The people who live here have been with me for so long. Curious as the village is, it's watched me grow up. I want St. Mystere, my village, to just stay as it is, forever. I see, and so it shall be. What of you, Flora? Will you stay here with your village? I... I... We don't know, but we solved the golden apple mystery! Are you sure this is quite alright, madam? Certainly. If leaving will make Floy happy, I'd like nothing more than to see her off with a smile. Astonishing village that was, Professor Layton. Does this mean you'll be gracing the front page of the London Times again sometime soon? No, Luke. St. Mustel's secret must stay between us. Huh? Why do you say that? You'll see, my dear boy. We don't want people to make a spectacle of Flora. That wouldn't be right. Of course. Always thinking of others. <laughs> well, one must always put a lady's needs first. That's what a gentleman does. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have placed a wrap on Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Now, this game is by no means a perfect game. If you have been with me since the start of the series, uh, you'll kind of have one major question in your head, which is, if uh, Lady Dahlia was a robot, how did she know to send a letter to Professor Layton? You could say maybe Bruno was the one who sent the letter, uh, but Bruno did not know Professor Layton was a good person, so he couldn't have sent the letter, which means that a robot had the wherewithal to send a letter. There's also the whole question of like, the robots, they're not alive, but they have hearts. Big question. Big questions. And then of course now, uh, we've left this town of robots essentially doomed. If Bruno chooses uh, to give up working now, he has nothing left to work for technically, then they would all just become dormant alone, and Leighton is not a billionaire. However, he's a good guy, so of course he'd turn down the money. Flora, on the other hand, is, uh, well, she's a little out of luck because she's going from the rich high life to Layton's teacher salary. Just kidding, of course. Um, but there are a lot of questions about how St. Monsieur was even run as a town. Where did the food come from? Where was, like, the doctor, right? I guess the robots wouldn't get sick, but what if Flora got sick? Maybe she can't get sick because there's no one else in contact with her. But, like, what if, like, a mosquito bit her or something? I don't know. You can think on it for a while. It's not a perfect game, but it's a great game. And it's a game I thoroughly enjoy, even though the gameplay is just puzzles. And I think that being able to share this with you guys, a bit of a, a different approach to, to gaming, uh, was a whole ton of fun for me. And I appreciate that you guys stuck with me through the series. Uh, another short one. I think that this, uh, this series might actually be shorter than uh, Luigi's Mansion was. I plan for there to be two or three bonus videos. Uh, for those of you who are interested in those, the first one should be coming out relatively soon, and it will be a wrap-up of puzzles that we've missed uh, after we climbed to the top of the tower when we had the option to go back into the village. Uh, that's because there were puzzles to solve in the village, and we want to go back and do those, of course. And then there's all the mini-games. There's the painting, the gizmos, and the in-sorting game which also unlocks puzzles known as Layton's Challenges, which we've actually found a couple of Layton's Challenges throughout the uh, throughout the game. Those have been the really hard puzzles that are numbered like 115, just randomly. 
Uh, so those are puzzles to solve as well. Uh, two or three bonus videos, and then we will be ready to move on to the next uh, Let's Play. And uh, that should be pretty exciting. I know that uh, this Let's Play wasn't everyone's favorites, but I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around and letting me uh, go ahead and finish it up. It was a joy to be able to play, and um, I actually got a lot of valuable experience with um, more precise editing. A lot of the times when I edit a video, it's just uh, like cut here, cut here, balance the audio, send it. Uh, this one, of course, with the top and bottom screen, there was a lot of hopping around from top to bottom, uh, which was very cool. Uh, we've reached the end of the credits. There was a nice little photograph there of everyone in the town, and we get a little uh, end cutscene of the gang returning to London with Flora in tow. So this is where you and Professor Layton live. Welcome to London. I love this. When I first arrived in London, everything was new and exciting. I'm having such a wonderful time. And it's all thanks to the Professor and Luke. Sometimes I feel like I might end up in danger when I'm with them. But anyway, I'm happy. If you're up there somewhere, Papa, thank you. And don't worry about me. I'm going to be just fine. There we are. We are left with a to-be-continued screen. Uh, this, of course, is in reference to Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, which is the next game in the series, Game 2, uh, which I might end up playing sometime on the channel later down the road. I usually like to take breaks between uh, different Let's Play series, and, um, you know, we did just complete this one. One quick thing to note is that Layton does end up adopting Flora, so Flora becomes a regularly occurring character for the remainder of the series. Um, but yeah, we have a to-be-continued screen. So we've reached the story's end. Professor Layton and the Curious Village is far from over. How many puzzles did you solve over the course of your adventure? Precisely 120 puzzles are hidden throughout the town. Why not try to complete every puzzle? Also, be sure to check the bonuses section. Fill certain conditions to unlock more bonus content. Your game will save now. When you continue, you will resume play at the top of the tower. I will save my completed game. To... Uh, we'll go ahead and drop it on the third save slot. Just in case. We'll get a golden latent symbol next to our save. And it will boot us back through to the title screen. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be all for now. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe, and to friends on my channel if you think they would enjoy it. It means a lot to me when you guys turn my videos around, and I'll catch you guys all back here next time for the first bonus video. Until then, as always, take care.